and get started. Uh, we'll start with some um, warm up um, based on my games, and then um, we'll take a look at some of the games played by Dr. Nykerstein, and we'll discuss the opening. So, Dr. Nykerstein is supposedly Magnus Carlsen, <laughs> right? Um, and uh, yeah, I've noticed online he actually lets it loose and uh, has lots of creative ideas, opening wise and strategy wise. You know, doesn't care about the result all that much. And um, it's yeah, it's quite quite interesting to see and lots of stuff to learn for sure. Right, but we will start with some uh, little warm up uh, based on my games, just to make sure you guys have, um, you know, so you guys so you guys basically. Um, ready to calculate ready to um ready to solve some tougher issues that, i mean tougher problems all right so this is my game from 2009 um and i was already a grandmaster um all right and we can we can skip uh the beginning of this game the ratings that you see on the top are fide ratings okay so at the, at the beginning of 2009, I actually got my grandmaster title in January. All right. Uh, but okay, so um, yeah, so we can skip this, okay? And then um, quick, super quick warm up. all right, is this one. All right, so rook c5, okay, how can um, white win this? Hopefully a lot of you know this uh, opening trap. Okay, so I feel like, yeah, this one is uh, pretty easy, right? So knight uh, e6, a lot of you uh, mentioned this uh, in the chat. Yeah, so knight e6, and then if bishop e6, obviously bishop c5, right? And if fe, then bishop c5 takes and uh, e5. All right, so yeah, that's uh, how we want to do it. And then if knight d5, then just takes, takes, queen d5, and then we just win the bishop, right? So pretty simple game. Uh, I really like when Black plays Dragon. It's probably one of the most beatable opening out there, um, other than probably Modern Defense, probably the most beatable opening. And uh, I would say maybe Scandinavian is also out there. Um, the least, the least solid openings for sure. All right, and then um, here my opponent uh, uh, goes B4 and i take and here black doesn't really have sufficient compensation um because basically i'm holding the c4 pawn if they ever go rook c8 queen c4 i'm happy uh to, to trade the queens and go to an end game and otherwise everything is pretty safe now my opponent goes bishop g4 okay so now uh it's just a really simple uh question so if you approve this for black if you like it for black type plus in the chat. If you don't like it, type minus. Okay, so I see lots of divided opinions. Uh, no, I would say this is not great. I mean, at least don't don't try to lose the game with your own hands. Uh, you know, like black is basically digging their own hole. Um, you know, bishop g4 is a little too too early. Um, you know, black can still try to go maybe I don't know rook b8 and uh, maybe bishop b6 knight d7 i would say yeah, something like that something like rook b8 bishop b6 knight d7 at least it's something you know it's not like 
completely lost or anything. So yeah, bishop bishop g4 is just uh, yeah way too much. And uh, then I repelled the attack pretty convincingly here. And uh, basically with the king on e1, I feel pretty uh, safe. All right. So it's a quite typical idea: the king's evacuation uh, to the center, or maybe sometimes to the other side of the board, and then yeah, white feels um, pretty comfortable, right? Yeah, and then and then the rest is just elementary. My opponent tried to give up some more material, but then I just picked it up, and then did the bond cloud, as they say now, right, with the king e2. <laughs> okay, who knew that bond cloud would actually be become an opening and uh, yeah, now now this is it. My opponent gets the second queen, but obviously it doesn't help. All right, uh, one more uh, game of mine that I wanted to show you. This one is also, I mean, they're all from 2009. All right, and uh, I wanted to show you this one. You can skip the opening part relatively quickly. All right, I can skip all of this. I mean, White's position looks pretty good already, I would say. But um, I'm also kind of shocked that my opponent let me go knight e4. It's, uh, yeah, I just can't believe it. I mean, they have to go d5 or something like that. Um, they have they have to, to stop knight e4. But my opponent uh, was also a grandmaster, but somehow um, he let me go knight e4. I just really don't know how is that even possible. But, you know... Sometimes even grandmasters makes, I mean, even grandmasters make uh, strange mistakes. Um, okay, um, so then here, um, try to calculate knight of six and then um, tell me if you like it or uh, don't like it. So basically, you can just type plus or minus in the chat if you approve it or not. So calculate knight of six. Okay, guys, so we'll just give it another 30 seconds or so, and then we will uh, keep going. Well, we definitely have to calculate uh, better um, all right, than that. But yeah, knight of six is a great idea. Uh, queen c6 uh, does nothing. You should see queen g5, of course, and after h6, you should see queen g6 checkmate. All right, so that's a quick finish here. All right, so yeah, you, you have to see this. Okay, um, so yeah, pre pretty simple choice. Yeah, knight of six, in fact, is perfect. Did we even get any pluses? I don't think so. Did anyone say plus? I'm just trying to check in the chat. Yeah, actually, Tariq, Tariq is at uh plus and i think that was the only person right uh dun, 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 dun. let me just check it i'm scrolling up yeah yep the only no actually uh yeah i think so i think uh yeah good, good job good job um all right so yeah uh this is perfect then my opponent goes bishop g2 so obviously i don't go king g2 because of queen c6 so queen h6 then um, bishop e5, and then uh, here rook e3. Okay, so now a quick question here. Um, well, you do need to do a little bit of calculation. So after bishop f3, which one do you think? So bishop g3 or king f1? You have a choice between two moves. All right. Um, so you can even flip a coin at the end of the day, but you know, try to calculate and do some work.
All right, so we have a few people suggesting kin of one. Yeah, and the kin of one is the best. Okay, uh, and basically the king goes to c3. All right, so now uh, the king on c3, in fact, uh, is as safe as it gets. Okay, uh, it's pretty good. Nobody can touch it. All right, but now let's take a look at uh, b5 real quick. All right, so here white has the only winning move. So let's do this one. So how can white win? There's only one move here, guys. So you really need to focus. All right, we got this one right. So uh, Narayan got this one right. Okay, so queen f4, yeah, good job. Uh, queen f4, and that's it. After b4, just the king goes up to c4. All good. All right, so yeah, queen f4. Okay, now a tougher question. So what if, uh, um, so what if bishop h5 here? Now this one is a lot more difficult. Um, and by the way, um, try to type you, your answers uh, like in direct messages. Um, I mean, directly message me because if you put it in the chat for everybody to see, then um, you know you may ruin the challenge uh, for other people. So yeah, make sure to actually private message me. And imagine every time you give me the wrong answer, you have to PayPal me 100 bucks. Okay, so maybe that will motivate you a little bit, you know, to think properly. <laughs> I'll, I'll, you know, I'll get like at least a million by the, the end of the class. Nobody got this one right so far. I mean, I'm just, it just keep getting like a collection of bad moves. All right, there we go. Actually, Megan, uh, great job. And then uh, Eric Leo got it. Okay, yeah, good job. So two people got this one, right? So um, Bishop H8. And I see Pranav actually suggested this move just before I said it, so it counts. Okay, so three people total got this one, right? and the rest um, didn't get it. Okay, so bishop h8, beautiful. The idea is rook e8 and then queen g7 checkmate. Yeah, there's nothing to do. Okay, um, okay, perfect. Uh, so yeah, moving on. Okay, now uh, let's take a look at uh, Dr. Nykerstein's games. All right, and uh, here we will be discussing some of the um, openings and uh, also at some points I'll ask you to find Good moves. Okay, so Dr. Nykerstein, Dr. Nike Terstein, yeah, Nykerstein, that's right. Junkenstein, everything, it's uh, all Magnus Carlsen. Um, I would just suppose that he also has a uh, Dr. Champenstein, <laughs> okay. And uh, I don't know, Frankenstein is like the most obvious one, but I don't know if he has that one. All right. Um, okay, so here we can skip uh, the opening part pretty quickly. So in neither of nowadays, black needs to be prepared for everything. Like a3, um, rook g1 is quite popular. Queen d3 got popular. Queen f3. 
um, basically you name it, even H4. I faced this move at 20, um, 2018 US Championship against uh, Neroditsky. He played H4 and I was like, oh, come on. Like I'm ready for every single line except, of, uh, except for H4. I'm like, come on. So basically nowadays when you play neither of his block, you have to be ready for a variety of moves uh, for pretty much almost uh, everything. So, um, yeah, after h4, I'm not sure if uh, bishop e6 is there such a good idea. Somehow it all worked out for him really well in the opening. I, I, I drew at the end, but I don't know. The opening was not that pleasant. Now, I mean, well, this move is kind of weird. I, I don't like this one at all. I honestly don't know why people would um play it no it was a draw at, at the u.s championship of the h4 although we went through ups and downs like white was better than black was better and it all ended up in the draw at the end of the day but yeah um lots of moves a4 is pretty standard i mean i wouldn't be surprised if they play b3 and bishop b2 who knows you know all sorts of moves i've tried here Maybe next fashion will be something like Queen E2 and then develop your bishop and then Long Castle. Because why not? All right. Uh, and, and anyway, so let's uh, skip this. In fact, A3 quite often becomes a useful move um, against B4. So I would say probably it's not the worst idea. Okay, now um, Bishop F3. And knight of one is a typical plan for such positions. All right. And then, um, yeah, then knight e3. And we will skip the next few moves. Okay. And here, find a good move for white. After this move, white will be better until the rest of the game. So we have one person who got it right. Okay, two people. By the way, in the chat, if I type you a plus means you got it right, if minus you can means wrong and you can try again. And by the way, it's not knight ed5, not knight cd5. Uh, and by accident, I typed uh, double plus, <laughs> and that was a uh, that was an accident. All right, let's uh, move on. Okay, so this one somehow proved uh, too difficult. Um, well, I think uh, like three people got it right. So Austin, Eric, uh, and somebody else. Let me see who got it right. Uh, da, da, da. Somebody else got it right, but uh, uh, Narayan. Okay, there you go. Okay, so I got so many answers that it's just sometimes it's hard to keep track of uh, all of them. All right, so yeah, now uh, Bishop uh, G4 could have been played right here, in fact, but Carlson hesitated for one move and played Rook D3 first, and then Bishop G4, which is which is fine. 
So the idea is just to hit the rook on c8, and then you can play knight d5 for real, because previously the c2 pawn was hanging. So it just makes sense to do this. And then um, now we have uh, a pretty common scenario where uh, our opposite color bishop is better um, than our opponents, right? And especially if light square bishop versus dark square bishop, it's um, pretty common. Now it looks like uh, this this endgame should be okay for black, but Carlson manages to um, win this quite convincingly by playing bishop e2. I really like this idea. So he transfers the, the bishop to c4, um, doesn't care about the e4, obviously, because of queen e8. And uh, even though right now he's down the pawn, but he's completely winning, right? So it's it's all about uh, the activity of the bishops. The bishop on c4 is perfect, right? And the bishop on e7, well, now on f8 is completely passive. And now look at this move, b3. You know, he's torturing his opponent. In fact, black is in total zoops one. Like at this point, I really don't see a single a single good move from black. And that's how you should suppose, supposedly you should be playing like this. Um, yeah, you should be torturing your opponents in such situations. Anytime, anytime they don't have any active play, anything, you should not be in the rush. You should be just, uh, you know, relaxing and playing moves like B3. All right, and yeah, now the rest is pretty simple. I've also noticed one thing that on the very top level, they don't really uh, shy away from the opposite color bishops, you know? Um, so basically opposite color bishops doesn't mean it's, it's gonna be a draw necessarily. So I feel like a lot of intermediate level players, you know, know that opposite color bishops could be drawn, but Carlson just, doesn't care, still goes for them. All right, so we will move on then to the next game. And uh, yeah, th this in this opening, um, by the way, black is playing pretty well. By the way, knight c3, after knight c3, black still can go c5. So if your opponents are playing this opening for white quite often, you can react with c5. In fact, this is quite uh, elementary. Okay, so c5, uh, in my opinion, is just the best response, and um, white doesn't have anything here, like, at all. So I feel like if more people played c5, white would have played this far less than they do. All right, uh, moving on. And then a6 here uh, is quite questionable. Uh, black just needs to take when d4 takes, and then bishop g4 is the easiest um, response, and then... Black is doing really well. The knight c6, e6, there's absolutely nothing to worry about. Okay, but they go a6, which is pretty strange, I should say. And then um, now uh, one question that I have here is this. So here Carlson decides to sacrifice the bishop on g5, goes cd, knight g5, and then d5. So basically the question to you is, um, question for you guys to figure out if it was a good idea or not so basically if you like this idea for white to take and then go d5 then type plus if you don't like this type minus All right, we've got lots of responses. Okay, that's good. Uh, now the move is a plus. In fact, uh, it's a great idea. And uh, the evaluation here is about plus three for white. So in fact, completely crushing initiative. Uh, white goes uh, knight b6, d6, bishop c4. And you know they just can't truly develop. Um, so yeah, this is great. Okay, plus, um, yeah, bishop d7, then knight b6 takes and then here queen g4 and uh, now look at this move bishop c4 i really enjoyed this this idea um again the point is don't be too quick to capture whatever is hanging right in fact you can do it later and uh, under better circumstances so bishop c4 takes knight 
takes and then takes and now white uh white is just simply winning at this point you know anybody would win this even like a toddler probably would beat black at this point so black resigned all right uh moving on now let's uh, take a look at this one all right um so against knight d7 uh by the way i uh i really like bishop a4 I feel like in 2018, in fact, I think I started this trend uh, by playing this uh, against Wesley So. And then later, um, I showed lots of people like some of the analysis that I've done at the time. Actually, let me show you something here. Um, to, to turn, let's see, where is it? So we'll find some files right here. Okay, there we go. And so it should be right here. Okay, so this is all of this stuff is, is my analysis. All right, and let me show you. Yeah, Bishop A4, and then um, basically the underlying idea, the, 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 well, the best idea here was the Rook sacrifice, which happens in this line in fact uh, back in 2018 i found uh, i found this sacrifice which actually some of my students already uh played and actually even beat people um and uh, yeah that that idea was like what 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 made all of this stuff possible what made me start it with bishop a4 and move four and the line that found I found back then was this so we don't have to go in all details here but this is just a really beautiful long-term rook sacrifice which works like this and then yeah here either um 96 or if queen e8 then we can go 90 96 97 also I believe at some point there was this move c5 but I can't quite remember where exactly it happened but yeah something like this but not, but then in uh, twenty, at the end of twenty twenty one, I actually found rookie six here, which is uh, even cooler. All right, so rookie six takes ninety six, and then here um, the variations, uh, well, somewhat complex. Um, but but yeah, uh, actually white white is much better pretty much everywhere okay so um so yeah that's that's a that's a good thing queen b6 bishop e3 and yeah i don't know how king e7 made it here but i guess it's one of the moves yeah and white white is much better okay um okay anyway so bishop a4 was pretty cool all right so let's uh get back to the game all right and and then yeah this this game turned out to be uh a walk in the park for carlson notice that he has this uh, e4 sacrifice uh i mean he sacrifices the e4 pawn as well so if you're looking for some creative opening ideas uh you know this is definitely one of them and sicilians try to sacrifice e4 pawns in particular and then and then just you know attack as much as you like all right, now uh, the question is, think about knight e5 and then tell me if you like it or not. Again, plus or minus question.
All right, so we have uh, quite divided opinions here. I see pluses, I see minuses, and in roughly 50-50 proportion feels like. Um, yeah, that's what it looks like to me. Yeah, so um, in fact, yeah, 95 is a really standard idea here, super standard, in fact. So yeah, we take, take, and then D6, and that's it, game over, basically. Okay. So yeah, I know that white only has one pawn uh, for a piece, right? But look look at black's pieces, look at black's king, um, look at white's development. If queen B6, by the way, simple bishop F4 here is sufficient. And um, yeah, black, black is in trouble. In a huge trouble. Okay, so in fact, this the evaluation here again is close to plus three. Okay, um, and again, so, some of you may ask, uh, like, how do you find this? Uh, you know, but you just you just need to study games. You, the more games you analyze, the more games you study, the the easier it will be to spot ideas like ninety five. Because I've seen this many many times, especially like in the Sicilians. This is a really typical idea. All right. In fact, one thing that you can do, uh, and I would highly recommend doing things like that, you can even study sacrifices uh, by a square. So if you have a chess base and mega data base, what you can do, you can go to filter, or like control F, the shortcut. Uh, I use shortcuts so much, sometimes I don't know how to do it with a mouse, but I think filter Where's the filter here? Like if you click on it, where's the filter? Oh, right here, filter list, yeah, there you go. So control F, then here advanced, then go to maneuvers, and then here you can select, let's say knight, e knight E5, and then click, let's say white. Um, and then you can say, let's say the knight from F3 is sacrificed um, uh, on E5, then check sacrifice box right here. And then if you like, you can choose, like, let's say, both players of 2,500 plus FIDE. And then you can also check the box of 1-0. So the, and then you get all 95 sacrifices in database, you know. Then you click OK, and then here, no. And it will find you, like, um, like all the games where 95 was a sacrifice. Sometimes chess, chess base has a weird in interpretation of a sacrifice. It might not be an actual one, but then, you know, you just separate those games. You don't really care about them. So yeah, we're not going to wait until the entire search finishes. We're going to stop this. And then, and then, uh, yeah, there we go. And then we can take a look. Okay, like for example, here, 95 obviously is not a sacrifice here in 95 um, is a sacrifice. Yeah, so what happens if bishop e5, bishop g4, right? Okay, so yeah, it, it is kind of a sacrifice. Okay, And then you can study as many sacrifices here as you like. In fact, uh, uh, I even have a database that I started just to have uh, different sacrifices, which is which is somewhere here. Yeah, there we go. No, wait, no, actually, I'm not sure if this is the right one. Um, no, I don't think it is the right one. Okay, anyway, so I even have a, sac a sacrifice database where I have like all the fifth rank, sixth rank, and so on sacrifices. All right, so yeah, Carlson goes 95 here and wins pretty easily. Yeah, this is it. Queen of three, rookie six. Yeah, with two pawns for a piece and huge attack, this is um, this is the end. All right, moving on. Okay, now let's uh, take a look at uh, let's take a look at this game. And the reason why we study, I mean, why I study uh online games is that quite often people will just play their opening ideas that they may not play um in the real games you know for whatever reason okay uh but but in the in the blitz game they actually will do it so here carlson goes rook g1 okay and this move in fact is incredibly interesting um 
uh, for white. Um, and uh, you know what? I even like it better than the regular Philidor. Rook G1 looks just phenomenal. And even when you look at, the, look at Rook G1 with the engine, you will see that the engine likes it a lot. The idea is quite simple, G4, G5, and then Bishop E3, Queen D2, Long Castle. Yeah, and white has a really enjoyable game. So yeah, try to analyze this and see how much fun it is. All right. All right, um, then G4, H4. And this is just uh, completely winning for white. In fact, yeah, this is game over. Black tried to attempt some A4 moves, A3, whatever, whatever that was, but you know, obviously it doesn't really work. All right. And yeah, this is it. All right. Um, okay, let's uh, take a look at um, this one. Okay, so another G4. I mean, another Rook G1, G4 idea. This time, Black uh, was trying to do a different approach. At least they didn't drop the e5 pawn. And what's surprising to me is that Carlson didn't mind the queen trade. Like, I would just probably loan castle, do something like that. But he's like, no, nope, let's go to an endgame. Quite strange, I should say. Well, at least it was strange to me when I studied this game, because I would assume that with rook g1, g4, you want to attack. But apparently, even an endgame could be uh, not so bad. Okay, so here a challenge for you guys. Okay, try to find a good move for white. All right, so uh, uh, I think a couple of you suggested uh, uh, the correct move. Uh, so I see, yeah, I see a, a couple of people. Actually, more like three people, right? Okay, so yeah, uh, knight b1, yeah, perfect idea. Knight b1, and then uh, rook d8, and then knight d2. You need to reshuffle that knight on c3. Just never a good idea to keep that knight there forever. I've noticed c3 is one of those squares that just, you know, doesn't really work out um, for the knight. I mean, you always need to move it somewhere else. Um, you know, c3 somehow is just really not the best square. Okay, and then after c5 here, um, there is an obvious tactic, knight f3. Not even a tactic, but more like, a, I don't know, a I mean, an active idea a little calculation here and that's it and eventually he outplayed his opponent all right um okay moving on now let's uh, glance at uh this game real quick all right and again he sacrifices the e4 pawn you see he doesn't really care about it all right and this is something similar to what i analyzed with bishop a4 uh 97 bishop a4 sicilian looks uh, pretty much the same all right so now the question is uh this so if you think that white has uh, sufficient compensation for a pawn that they sacrificed type plus if you don't think so type minus because right now white is down a pawn right so just um basically tell me if it's worth it or not
All right, so here I would say that uh, yeah, white has enough, uh, you know, at least for equality, uh, probably even more than equality, uh, because they just immediately get the d6 pawn back. All right, so yeah, it makes it so much easier, right? I don't think uh, knight d4 was even a good idea because of some sort of bishop g5, perhaps. Bishop g5, f6, and uh, at the very least, if you don't want to calculate, you can just do something like this, which looks pretty good for white. But I would assume that white has something uh, even much better than that. Like, if you want to go Carlson style, you can... If you, if you want to go Dr. Uh, uh, Knight Christine style, you can do something like this, probably. Actually, I'm just wondering if it even works out. No, probably doesn't. No, king of seven. Mm, yeah, it doesn't work out. Never mind. Uh, ta -ta -ta. Yeah, you have to. <laughs> yeah, you have to be in a very, very good mood to do that. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Yeah, but something like probably just down to earth, like bishop uh, f6 takes, takes. Yeah, this looks pretty simple and good. Yeah, white, white has a serious advantage here because of the pawn structure mainly. All right. Um, okay. And then um, here there's one good move. And then after that move, white is much better. So what is it? Just one, one quick question here. Should take no more than 30 seconds. All right, so we got um, all right. We got two correct answers here by Kevin and Narayan. Okay, so the move is uh, Bishop uh, B three. I mean, you need to trade the light square of bishops. Okay, once you trade the light square of bishops, then the knight will dominate the bishop on G seven. I mean, pretty standard idea. I mean, knight knight uh, versus bishop is just always better in this uh, material correlation. If it's like all heavy pieces and then knight versus bishop, knight is destroying the bishop. Okay, so you just need to be familiar with that. So bishop b3, and then the rest is a piece of cake here. Super easy. Yeah, I mean, black tried to push the deep pawn, but it's not helpful uh, since white can stop it really easily. Yeah. All right, uh, moving on. Okay, so let's uh, let's quickly glance then at this game as well. And uh, so against this opening in particular, uh, yeah, against this opening in particular, um, I think the most challenging move is this bishop f4. I would definitely suggest looking this up. Uh, and a lot of positions computer here gives even, but um, it's not that simple. You can you can look it up um, and just do the analysis because right now we don't really have much time to do that. But yeah, in my opinion, Bishop F4 is quite interesting. All right, okay, we can skip we we can skip this part. By the way, a really common misconception is that um, D4 is really positional, but you know. It's wrong because if you really want to make it sharp, you'll find the way. You know, white can always loan castle pretty much everywhere. All right. Um, okay. Now uh, I'm surprised with this uh, move, Bishop uh, G7. Clearly, black uh, misplayed it. I mean, at this point, it's probably not that good for them anyway. But letting white escape with the bishop like this, you know, is just uh, kind of unacceptable because at this point, white has a huge advantage all right um okay now uh easy question what should white do here this one should be elementary kinder kindergarten level
Okay, I feel like almost everybody got this one right. Um, yeah, pretty much almost everybody. Uh, so H4, of course, you have to open up the game. So it's not even a, it's not even a sacrifice because if knight g4, you just take queen g5. Even if it was a sacrifice, we still would want to play it, you know. Um, but yeah, it's it's fine. But if it's not a sacrifice, now white white's position is completely winning, right? At this point, it should be a no-brainer. All right. So yeah, knight comes in, comes to f4, and now g6, and then just after rook g1, black simply resigned. Okay, nice and easy. Okay, and uh, let's take a look at uh, one more here. And we have another rook g1, g4 idea. And, uh, you know, it's quite interesting that at this point he played a4. It's, it, you know, um, yeah, I see the question in the chat, does this win every time? Yes, it does. Every time, you know, 100% guarantee. <laughs> okay. Whenever you play Rook G1, that's it. Game over. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, people don't know how to defend against Rook G1s in general. Um, like, like, do you know if that many people know how to face this move? I remember in early 2000s, it was like a joke. You know, nobody even took, took it seriously. But um, nowadays, it's it's actually not that um, bad for um, for white. At least if they they go for the regular stuff, white is doing really well in this. Um, so yeah, I know how to play against this. So basically, black uh, needs to go b five, and there there was one there was one line in particular that I really liked. So a four, then b four. Knight d5, yeah, and then takes, takes, and then um, trying to remember precisely at this, the knight of six, queen d4, and then here, um, and here there was this pawn sacrifice. I believe it was, I believe it was e6 or something like that. Let me double check real quick. Mm -hmm. Should be somewhere here. Now let's see. Yeah, here there you go. Takes takes. Oh, queen c seven. Okay, queen c seven first, and then ninety seven. Yeah, I was trying to figure out how is the queen getting to d four and then b four, but yeah, here it is. And then black is a really great compensation here, potentially even more. In a practical game, I feel like this is just a lot easier to play for black by far, in fact. Yeah, and if g4, then bishop b7, takes, takes, takes. And then, okay, one, one, uh, one more challenge in this. All right. Um, what should black play? Okay, so yeah, um, knight c6, yeah, that's correct. So knight c6, and then if knight c6, then queen b6, and black is fine. Okay, so yeah, that's that's how you basically refute this, um, this opening. Okay. All right. So then, um, then yeah, let's let's quickly take a look then uh, at what happened in the game. No, wait a second. For some reason. Um, this is not exactly the game. Second. Yeah, there we go. Okay. 
So we can skip all of this. Yeah, a4, and you see he just plays positionally. So like if you go g5, g4, it doesn't mean that you have to long castle and attack on the king. Positional chess is still possible here. Um, okay, so now the question is, how do you evaluate cd? If you like this uh, for black, type plus. If not, type minus. All right, so yeah, this is a horrendous move. I mean, it's really, strategically speaking, the move is atrocious. Like, black needs to go a5 or do something like that. Or, you know, but definitely, I don't know, even c5 is better, you know. Uh, but definitely not cd, because after cd, then bishop b5 and gives up the light squares, it weakens the d6 pawn, which is lost right away. Yeah, it's a, a really terrible idea. And now uh, white is, of course, winning, completely winning, in fact. And as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, you know, top players are not really afraid of going into the opposite color bishop endgames, like here, for example. You know, they don't have, they, basically, top players don't really follow the rules. Um, you know, they don't, nobody follows the beginner's rules or anything like that. There are no rules. Okay. And then, yeah, white eventually wins. Although it looked quite complicated, I should admit. At the end, it definitely look, looked way too difficult. I mean, it should have been way simpler than this, but I assume they both were, you know, low on time. So that's why we got a really, really messy situation at the end. Probably some pre-moves and all. All right, everyone. So thank you for being here. That, that would be all for today. And uh, I'll see you guys later. All right. Bye, everyone.